The, the choice of Boeings is very important. Ideally, you should be making crescendo when you're playing up and diminuendo when you're playing down because the bow, uh, we know the bow is heavier in the frog and lighter in the tip. Now, if you're starting or you started so it's always a compromise. What do you want? What, uh, what does the phrase suggest? I think <clears throat> the phrase is very round. First of all, the piano starts. I would start up bow because it's not a new beginning, if you know what I mean. This piano has started already. The accompaniment, this quavers. to play. So, if it's a bow, then... But the music is much smarter than this. It's not the phrasing. So, you have to rise above that and use and then see what can I do with my bow and what can I do with my hands. And the phrasing comes first. So, first, when you learn the work, it's very important to you know, put violin aside, not to touch it. Just learn the uh, score and then see what phrasing, how do I feel about this music? You know, where does it uh, go? Where is the climax? And so on. And then only you take the violin and say, okay, here I play up bow, here down bow. I use so much bow because I need, uh, you know, very little bow because I want to start less, and so on, you know, so just telling you the process of learning. You start from here, from the B, uh, and you already end up being in the frog. Uh, but if you think about it, the bow, it's lightest at its tip, you know that, yeah? And it's heaviest in the frog. So if you start from here, uh, 
you're, it's inevitable that you're going to make a, a create an accent. So I would be really free. The main point of discussion is the phrasing, because if you if you play um, and you release because simply because of one fact, because the bow is very light here, so if you do not compensate here, if you don't give more substantially more speed of the bow, uh, you will only make diminuendo, and this would be the result. Uh, you will make the crescendo here. And so on yeah so we have the bow and uh, we have to work with it you know if we turn this bow around like this and play it like this then we would have a different effect so we would play like this uh, Understand? Just to give you the perspective, you know, of how it works, the nature of the bow. <laughs> this was so the bow, in a way, uh, it would have been probably better and more logical to have the frog here, frog there, and the whole bow of the frog, <laughs> or one stick, and that's it. But for some reasons, the inventors of this bow came to conclusion that this is how it should be. And here is good to break chords, like in Bach, you know what I mean? And it's sort of comfortable to break here because you can, you can get three or more notes uh, here in the world. And you wouldn't do that. Uh, and so on. So I'm just talking about the physics to give you the perspective. So coming back to the phrase, let's define what this phrase is and what we want to say. And now let's uh, let's practically think how the bow would work. Uh, how what can we do with the bow? What is the distribution of the bow? Because the key to the successful phrasing is its good distribution. For the first uh, phrase, you used only so much bow, let's say. The second phrase, you shoot a... And so on. So, the second phrase must, must start with a twice amount of bow. So, significant raise. Otherwise, the two are going to be alike.
Because, you know, when you change, you know, up, down or down, up, as a rule, the, these connections have to be done with the same speed of the ball. Unless you want to change the speed, but you have to be always in control. At the moment, I don't feel that you are controlling this, these changes. Uh, and usually, the, as a rule, uh, from one note to another, we don't have to hear this change. And that has to do with the coordination of right and left hand. Uh, and if that's not happening, then it's very um, hard to trace the, any ideas that you have for phrasing. Because, you know, phrasing is the, uh, as if, you know, if I spoke always, I, on each, you know, uh, I, I would put each accent on each word, each consonant, you know, uh, then you wouldn't be able to get the sense. You would get some idea of what I'm saying, <laughs> but, you know, this is what phrasing is about. Don't think that you know, playing slow is not virtuosic. You know, the way you, uh, you can connect uh, just up. Uh. This is virtuoso, you know? Uh, so... Uh. To make the good change without anyone noticing it, it's virtuoso. It's not only when you play fast.